Welcome to Daily Overdose. Everything in your life happens for a reason. Your responsibility is to look at these things in your life and ask this question, why now? You need activation energy to start the chain, to start to sit down, to start to get out of bed, to start to walk out the door. That's the key to creating any kind of change. This activation energy inside of you that causes the initial go. And then what do we hear over time? Once you start, there's a chain reaction and that allows you to keep going. If you only have 24 hours in a day, your success is dependent upon how you use the 24. You gotta hear me, people talk about Oprah Winfrey, you know, Ted Turner, Warren Buffett, listen to me, I don't care how much money you make, you only get 24 hours in a day. And the difference between Oprah and the person that's broke is Oprah uses her 24 hours wisely. That's it, listen to me, that's it, you get 24. I don't care if you broke, you grew up broke, I don't care if you grew up rich, I don't care if you're in college, you're not in college, you only get 24 hours, and I blew up literally. If you could have what you needed and wanted, what would it be? What sort of friends would you have? What would your family relationships look like? How would you conduct yourself with your children? How would you educate yourself? You need to think through how it is that your life could be properly arranged if you had that ability. And then you can aim at that. And the funny thing is, is that if you do posit a goal of that sort and work towards it, you will move towards it. The goal will change because you'll learn things along the way. But I mean, I've, I've dealt with hundreds of people in my clinical and consulting practice, and we set a goal, we develop a vision and work towards it and it, it things inevitably get better for me. So it's not a luxury, it's, it's difficult. It's a moral responsibility and it isn't happiness. It's, it's not, the pursuit isn't for happiness. There's always more room to grow. There's always more knowledge to gain, always more skills to perfect. We're never done with the education process because education is part of the path to wealth. Education and learning is part of the path to health. Continued education can turn you around if you're headed in the wrong direction. We need to open up our minds to different alternatives. We need to learn to appreciate the other side of the debate so that we can strengthen our own and defend our own. We need to expose ourselves to a wide range of thoughts and philosophies and ideology. Be eager to learn. Always be eager to learn, no matter how far along you are in the journey. No matter where you are in your success. Keep that eagerness to learn. Gather up as much knowledge as you can. And then what? Debate it. Put it all on the table and look at it. Dissect it. Turn it around and stare at it. Ask questions. Make statements. Make sure that what you finally do the model you develop of strong appreciation for your own style and your own methods and your own process for achievement, make sure that what you finally do is a product of your own conclusion. That's what's valuable. Be a student, not a follower. When I was growing up, everybody's goal was get rich enough so you never have to work. Now, like all my friends are 15, 18 years my senior. People like uh, Steve Wynn in most of Las Vegas, he's like 74. Uh, Warren Buffett's 85. Uh, Peter Gruber, one of my dearest friends in the world, owns the Golden State Warriors, the LA Dodgers. We're partners in the LAFC football team in LA. Um, brilliant guy, 74 years old. And they're all working harder now than they ever were, and they don't have to work. So the goal is, Make enough money so you don't have to work and then you'll do what you love and you'll pour your time and energy into it. But you have to make that decision. It's the first most important decision is I'm going to become an owner of American business. You don't want to have an Apple phone and not own Apple. And you don't want to just own Apple because any company can go up and down. Right? You want to own the index. You want to own you know, a variety with enough diversification. But if you can just shift, and I've taught people who've told me they couldn't, they have no money, they can't save. It's really easy once you get momentum. 
I run a company with hundreds and hundreds of team members. Multiple profit centers within the company. Every one of those folks has a plan for the revenue they're going to produce in this month, this quarter, and this year, and the expenses they're going to spend to do that in this month, this quarter, and this year. Thereby, we do annual projections. It's really not rocket science. It's sixth grade math. What are you going to do with your money? Don't get to the end of the month and go, where'd it go? Because you end up being a rat in a wheel. And you work your whole life. Run, 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 run. And you get to the end of your life and there's nothing. And you earned four to ten million dollars in your working lifetime. And you have nothing because you didn't write it down. It's a serious principle. You got to get out of debt and stay out of debt. Now, everybody knows Dave Ramsey's going to say that. Everybody knows I'm going to say Proverbs 22 7. The borrower is slave to the lender. When you don't have any payments, you know what you got? Money. That was hard. Are we through yet? You getting this? It's not deep, but I wanna. Yeah, that's the problem. I wanna. I need nothing, but I want a lot of stuff. There's nothing wrong with getting you some nice stuff, but the problem is when your stuff gets you. When you got a student loan that's been around so long, you think it's a pet. <laughs> when MasterCard is your master. When you have discovered bondage or American distress. Well, you can't live without debt. That's what my finance professor said too, and he was broke. What's wrong with that picture? A broke finance professor. Broke finance professor is like a shop teacher with missing fingers. You have kind of a Dr. Phil moment with some of these people. How's that working for you? Because all these people are running around, these quote unquote experts, and all of them that taught me. I was in the real estate business. We used OPM, other people's money. We were taught leverage and all the sophisticated views of leverage and all this stuff. And, and I can unpack it for you and I can pencil whip you. I'm a math nerd. I, it's what I do. But at the end of the day, there's nowhere in Scripture God used debt to bless his people. It's not in there one time. As a matter of fact, there's not even one positive thing said about it. It's not a salvation issue. It's not a sin. It's not any of those things. Biblically speaking, it's just stupid. Never once did God, you know, were the Israelites hemmed into the valley by the Amalekites, so they did a bond issue. You gotta know the word. Study the word. Because God will show you. Because he loves you. He's got a plan for you. The third one. First one is you gotta do a budget. Second one is you gotta get out of debt. You don't have any payments, you got money. The third one is quality relationships. Now, this is kind of weird. But think about it. Marriage is grand, divorce is 50 grand. <laughs> Dysfunction in the family costs you money. Straight up. Crazy parents. Drunk brothers, if you let them come into your boundaries and, and interfere in God's stewardship of your household, their dysfunction will cause you to be broke because you join in the dysfunction. And we all got it. Anybody doesn't have crazy in their family just hadn't been awake lately. Everybody's got crazy somewhere in the family. Some of it's behind a closet door, some of it's behind over the hill, some of it's around the corner at the still. It's, you, you don't know where it is, but crazy is in your family. And I'm no exception. I'm from Hills East Tennessee. When we do crazy, we do it big. So you, dysfunction and your personal dysfunction. We sadly get to work with the effects of all the dysfunction because we do financial counseling and coaching. And so we've worked for 25 years now with addicts. And I just got to tell you, that if you're addicted to something, whatever it is, gambling, pornography, those are the two big ones right now. 
huge, just unbelievably huge. And, and, and you know, certainly the old standbys, drugs and alcohol and that kind of stuff. But people that are addicted, 100% of them are eventually broke. And people who stay with them are all 100% eventually broke until the addiction changes and Jesus heals it. That's an extreme example of quality relationships. Thank you for watching our videos. Please like and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss another video.